In this video, we're going to look at the basics of using the paintbrush and the pencil tool in Photoshop. So the first thing to do is to go up to File, New, and we'll create a canvas that's 800 pixels by 800 pixels, making sure that it is uh, the color mode is RGB color. This will open us up into a new blank canvas, and let's first begin by looking at the paintbrush tool. So the paintbrush tool is located beneath a tool that kind of looks like a, a, a band-aid, the spot healing brush. And first, a good idea just to kind of take a look at this main toolbar in Photoshop. Uh, behind some, several of the tools are other tools. Uh, and you can tell there's multiple tools uh, behind a particular image if you see a little uh, triangle on the corner. And what that means, you can use your right mouse button to click and see the other tools that are uh, lying beneath the image. And most of these have a triangle suggesting that there are or there is more than one tool uh, to be selected there. All right. So first, the paintbrush tool. I'm going to go down. It's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, on this particular version of Photoshop, and it looks like a paintbrush. Uh, and if you let your mouse hang out over top of it, you'll see that it says brush tool. And a common mistake that's made is choosing this this brush tool here. It also looks like a paintbrush, but this is actually a history brush tool. It does uh, something, something very different. Uh, for the sake of this video, we're looking at some basic uh, drawing using the, uh, the brush tool. So, We'll right click on the brush tool and we'll see that there are three tools behind the paintbrush. And yours may initially not even look like a brush at all. It could look like the pencil if that was used last. So we'll right click and make sure we have the brush tool selected. Now there are some things to take notice uh, of immediately and that's this, this horizontal toolbar uh, that appears at the top. In this horizontal toolbar we can see a couple different styles of the brush. Uh, here is the size of the brush tip, and we'll spend a few moments taking a look at this. Here we can change the diameter of the brush, and uh, that's how large of a tip you're actually going to have on your brush. Uh, and here we can look at the hardness. For most of the things that we'll be doing in this course, we want a hardness of 100%. Uh, the hardness and the diameter can be changed by scrolling uh, on this uh, this meter here or by simply typing in uh, a number. In this case, I'll put 10, the size of the brush we want. Next, there are a couple different, uh, or rather multiple different, a couple different categories and within each category, multiple different uh, modes for the brush and we're going to stick with normal. There's opacity, uh, which is uh, the ability or uh, another strength meter in uh, in the brush tool and the flow, which is how quickly the paint will come out of uh, the brush. And for, for most of the examples we'll do, we'll leave them both at 100. And in this video, we'll leave them both at 100. Next, uh, down here you can see the color swatches. There's a couple different ways to change the color of your brush. The thing uh, to be aware of is whatever color is on top, you'll see there are two color squares here. And Whatever color is on top uh, will be the color, the active color for the brush. And we can change that color by double clicking on the color that's on top. Uh, I'll go up here and click red. And you'll notice that over here, this hasn't changed to red yet. I actually need to select the shade of red that I want. And I can go up to make sure I get the brightest red that I want. I need to select then a shade of red in the larger box and click OK. Uh, after I've done that you'll see that red is now the top color of these two uh, foregrounds uh, and red will be the active color when I use the brush. So I'm going to draw just a squiggly line and a circle and you can see uh, how this brush tool might work. This is a size 10 tip. If we ever want to undo anything in Photoshop or if we've made a mistake, if I were to make a a smiley face and I didn't like the mouth that I put on this smiley face. Uh, one of the 
the uh, top 10 things, tools in Photoshop, not found in this toolbar, is the ability to undo, or in Photoshop, it's called step backward. So I'm going to go edit, step backward, and it will remove the last, uh, the last action that I did. A lot of people want to run to the eraser tool. They see an eraser here, or it looks like an eraser, and they want to use that to erase. Now that'll work, but the eraser tool can do a lot more and can actually be dangerous if you're just trying to undo the last thing or the last few things you did. So the best way to undo the last action is to go to edit step backward. And there are also shortcut keys you can use on the keyboard. Control shift Z will also uh, step backward or undo the last action. So I'll just put my circle here. And to take note, I'm using a size 10 brush tip and the color red. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size of the brush tip. I want to make it 25 so it will uh, you know, make it considerably larger. I'm going to type 25 in there, which I just find the easiest way to get to a desired specific number uh, as opposed to sliding this uh, diameter scale. And I've got a now 25 uh, tip brush, uh, 25 pixel tip brush, and you can see that. Uh, it's larger than the, the lines I've, uh, I've just drawn. I'm also going to change the color just to, to exercise that again. I'm going to double click on the top color. I'm going to choose a shade of green. I want a little darker green, so I move down in the, uh, the color picker area of the larger square and click OK. And I'm going to pretty much draw the same, the same thing in green. I can undo that by stepping backward, edit step backward, just like we did above. So this looks at two things within the brush tool. One, changing the size of the tip, and two, changing the color. So I'm going to go back into the, the size of the brush tip here, and you can see that it's still 25. Now, here's something that we won't use a whole lot of, but it can be set to something default, or it can be set to something when you open Photoshop and you start using the brush tool and you see something just isn't quite right. So let me slide this hardness down here. And let me just draw these same lines with a hardness of, you know, I don't know, 10%. percent well, I'll reduce the hardness from 100% to 10%. And I'm going to draw these same green lines. And, and you'll see that they look more like a spray paint. Or they look less hard. Or they look like softer lines. And that's because the hardness was changed. So you may want that desired effect, but in most cases for the things that we'll do in this course, you won't. And if by chance when you start drawing with the brush tool, if you see that it looks soft or it looks like that spray paint uh, style of brush, the problem is that the hardness is set too low. So I'm going to bring that back up to 100%, and then you'll see I'm back to a a brush that looks more like the, the first set of uh, green lines I drew. All right, to review how to undo something, edit, step backwards. I'm going to do that a few times and get back to just my uh, the green and the red uh, lines that I've drawn here. And I can do it one more time. I'll change the color to a blue, a shade of blue here. I want a little darker blue, so I'll go here. I'll change my brush tip this time to, let's say, 50. I click somewhere else to act to set it. You can click either in Photoshop uh, or just on this toolbar. Just you could also go in here and set your uh, your brush tool using the the scale, and then you can see I have a much larger and blue line. Once you get a, a very large tip, if you just wanted to make a circle, you can see you can do that uh, also. And I could set that tip back down to let's say 15, and I could make just blue circles with, uh, with the same tip. So, uh, you know, by just clicking quickly, you can just make a quick circle. Uh, by holding the mouse, you can, uh, you can draw lines. Next, inside this, this tool that is right now the brush tool, we can right-click on it, and we also see the pencil tool. The pencil tool gives a tip that's more, uh, more like a square, and uh, can be used for more uh, more intricate or things that are smaller when we really want to get close and uh, an editor creates something with a little more detail. So I'll click on the pencil tool 
And right away, uh, you'll see I, the tip is much smaller. I'm going to change this pencil tip to size 5. And then I'll maybe I'll change the color to, uh, to a shade of purple. And you can see what I get is a much smaller, and it's actually uh, a more square tip. Now, if I change that to, let's say, 20, I'm using the pencil tool. And the pencil tool still gives me a circle, but it's a little bit more... Uh, it's a little bit more grid-like, a little bit more square, even though it's a circle. And we're going to use the pencil tool. We want to get real close, and we want a much smaller tip and a little bit different effect. So here's the pencil tool, and I'll bring my pencil tool back down to, let's say, a tip of size 10. And I'll change the color to black. And you can see that uh, here is the pencil tool. A lot like the brush tool, but you can see the edges are uh, are harder and we would use this when we're, we're, we're trying to get real close and and uh, create something uh, with more detail all right so one more thing to look at within these tools and i'll switch back to the brush tool but know that both the brush and the pencil tool can be used by right clicking uh here and i'll switch back to my brush tool and i'll leave the color uh at black in fact i'm going to create a new canvas or maybe I can, maybe we can do it down here. All right. I'll change the size of the brush tip to five. And I'm just going to draw five black lines. So here I've got a black line and another one. And I'm using my brush tool for this. So I drew three straight black lines there, or as straight as I could get them going quickly. Uh, and uh, they look fine. But if I wanted to draw perfectly straight lines. There's a key on the keyboard that I can use in combination with the brush tool to do that. Now the sequence that you use them in is very important. So the key is the shift key. And if I wanted to draw perfectly straight lines, uh, here is the, the order of operations that I would use to do that. Uh, I'm going to touch my brush tool. Maybe I, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at five, but I'll change the color of it so you can see. I'll bring it, make it red. And I'm going to touch my brush tool down, but before I draw or go any further, I'm going to hold the shift key down throughout this whole um, uh, this whole action. So I have my brush down, so I'm holding my left mouse button down, I'm holding the shift key down, and now I'm going to draw a straight line. Now notice if I move my mouse up and down, because I held, have my shift key held down, the line will be perfectly straight. When I get to the end of where I want that line, I'm going to let go of my mouse and the shift key and walk back. And I'm going to draw a couple of these. But remember, the order or the sequence that you do this is very important. Uh, and the sequence is this. I'm going to start the line. You can see the red has started. I'm just going to drag it so you can see that. Next, I'm going to uh, hold the shift key down. And now I'm going to draw a third. And look, uh, I can even go up and down with my mouse, as you can see here. And uh, I'm still going to get that perfectly straight line. Let go of my mouse. Let go of the shift key walk it back. I'm going to touch the mouse down, then the shift key, and I can draw perfectly straight lines if I start my line, hold the shift key, and come across. All right. So what we've looked at here is where to find the brush tool, where to find the pencil tool, how to change the color of the brush and the pencil, and how to draw perfectly straight lines using the mouse and the shift key uh, together. That wraps it up for this particular lesson. In the next lesson, we'll look at how to use the combination of the brush tool and the shift key to, uh, to draw other shapes with perfectly straight lines.